Guys, let's start Ramadan with a bang. Shady. No, I'm being serious. It's very simple and in your face. It's just like, hey, girl, shut the fuck up. I ain't got to explain shit to you. You see the damn shit. Don't judge people. Umutu. You are a person. They are a person. I'm a person. We are all persons. Don't judge it. Because life is like rice. Yes. Allahu Akbar. He has to make at least 200,000 a year. Are you on drugs? No. <laughs> Why is he so happy? I talked to her father today. What he says? He says he, I'm a good guy. And? And I'm gonna marry his daughter. Oh, what's his daughter? Fatima, you're mine. Wallah, you're mine. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Do <laughs> Shua. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi. Daima tatatafi. Niha. Niha nahmi. The Rada is open for the women's section. <laughs> This is for the women whose husbands may not practice the deen as enthusiastically as them. I know it can be so disheartening when you're seeing men walk into the masjid and you're hearing about families reading the Qur'an together and your husband isn't on the same wavelength. Instead of your pleas being met with more and more frustration, I want you to try this instead. Firstly, forget what he's doing for a minute, 
you set the tone for yourself and for your children if you have them. Women are amazing at setting the vibe, setting the environment. And even if a person is in that environment where somebody is so enthusiastic about Ramadan and about doing ibadah, that does catch on. Even if it doesn't change anything he does physically, it may change the state of his heart and even that is a win. Secondly, smile at him with your sweetest smile and make dua for him openly to his face. Let him hear it. May Allah bless you with extreme love for the Quran. May he make you a leader for our deen. May Allah grant us a home together in Jannah. Thirdly, put on the dhikr in the home. You can put on the Quran, on your phone, on the TV, whatever it is. Allow the words of Allah to run through the home. And finally, I love this one. Share things about the deen, about Allah, about whatever you've learned with him. Just show him that you're passionate. Don't make this about him. Make it about you and your excitement for Allah. Men hate being forced to change, but they can be inspired too. What's the difference between the terms tarawih, qiyam, and tahajjud? Are they the same? As for the terms Qiyam, Tahajjud, and Taraweeh, they all include a meaning of praying at night. But at closer inspection, there are a few subtle differences that can be pointed out. As for the term Qiyam, it's in reference to any form of worship that happens at night. Whether it's prayer, whether it's the recitation of Quran, the remembrance of Allah, or anything else. And it also includes, meaning Qiyam, it includes prayer that happens both before sleep and after sleep. Then you have the term tahajjud. Tahajjud, according to a lot of linguists, it's in specific reference to prayer that happens at the night. And some scholars have added that it's in reference to prayer that happens after a period of sleep. And this was the nature of the Prophet ﷺ's night prayer. Where he would wake up from sleep and he would pray and he would repeat that on multiple occasions during one night. In fact, the word tahajjud itself comes from the word hajada, which may mean he slept or it may mean he stayed up. So it carries both of the opposite meanings. So with this understanding, we realize that the, uh, the term Qiyam is more general than the term Tahajjud. Because Qiyam includes prayer and it includes other acts of worship. Whereas Tahajjud is specific to prayer. And similarly, Qiyam refers to prayer before or after sleep. Whereas Tahajjud is in specific reference to prayer that is after sleep. So this is something about the terms Qiyam and Tahajjud. And then you have the word, of course, Taraweeh. And it was given this name because the Imam sits for a short break between each of the four units of Salah. And that break in the Arabic language is called a Taraweeha. Taraweeha. And the plural of this Taraweeha is Taraweeh. So when, when you say Taraweeh, we are referring to the night prayer that includes breaks. And of course, it has become associated with the night prayer of the month of Ramadan. And Allah knows best. If your social media is causing you, for example, to grow as a Muslim, a Muslimah, it's causing you to learn new knowledge, it's causing you to use your time wisely, effectively, it's a platform for you to give da'wah and to speak about your religion and to forbid what is evil and to promote what is good. Guess what? Your social media is part of the dunya that Allah has spoken highly of. If in your particular circumstance, your social media is being used for other things. It's detracted from your salah. It's made your attention span very short. You're unable to lower your gaze. You're responding to every DM that's coming your way and so on and so forth. Then in that scenario, your social media is part of the dunya that Allah has condemned. Again, take your wealth as an example. If your money is coming from the halal, you're spending it on the halal, you're paying your zakah on time and you're giving out your sadaqah, Alhamdulillah, your money is part of the dunya that Allah has praised. If your wealth is coming from the haram and you're spending it on the haram and it's distracting you from salah and it's caused you to break up from family, this is from the dunya that Allah has condemned. And then apply that touchstone on your marriage. Has it caused you to grow or has it caused you to become lazy and ineffective? Apply that on your mirror reflection. Has it caused you to become a better Muslim or has it caused you to be distracted? Apply that to everything under your disposal. Then with this exercise, you will see whether what you have is from the praiseworthy aspect of dunya. Therefore, you thank Allah for it and you do more. Or it's the condemned aspect of dunya and you do course adjustment.
Allah even tells us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, one of the regrets that people will have is the friends that they chose in this life. Good company is the thing that will solidify and strengthen our taqwa because it's always easier to do things and you're affected by the state of the people around you. And in this hadith that I always like to mention, Allah mentions that the people that he loves are the people who love each other for him. So the only way that we can achieve this love is if we find people who are also in love with Allah and we love them for Allah's sake and we move with them in everything that Allah loves and is pleased with. I feel the love. Alhamdulillah, I love you too, bro. I'm the end bell. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm with the queen. Abba, tell me, what's the last hadith that you memorized? Uh, the Prophet said, Yisra wa la tasra wa sakir wa la tadafiru. Tell me, what does sakir mean? Uh, Who's the rawi of the hadith? Uh, I'm Yisra wa la tasra wa Be careful when you openly get closer to your deen. You know even though you became a better Muslim, you will still find yourself chasing after dunya sometimes. And when you do, others will make comments on how you act so religious but still sin. Trust me, I've been there. When you get closer to your deen, you also start realizing how lost everyone else is, including some of your own friends. The best part is when you see people come closer to their deen as well, but then they fall back into dunya because of someone or something. That might be me one day, but all I can do is pray that it won't be me. I've been told, oh, it says that you can't murder, and I'm like, yeah, and I went and I found it in the Quran. So what, we can murder? Oh, yeah, you can kill a Christian. Really? Yes, you Show can. Me. And they wish you disbelieve as they disbelieve, so you would be alike. So do not take from among them allies until they emigrate for the cause of Allah. But if they turn away, i.e. refuse, then seize them and kill them for their, for their betrayal, for their betrayal, wherever you find them, and take not from among them any ally or helper. Except for those who take refuge with the people between yourselves and whom is a treaty or those who come to you, their hearts strained at the prospect of fighting you or fighting their own people. And if Allah had willed, if he had willed, he could have given them power over you and they would have fought you. So if they remove themselves from you and do not fight you and offer you peace, Allah has not made a cause for you to fight them. Oh, that's comforting. Oh, Thank you. How is that, how is that telling? Terrifying. And you know one thing that I found scary with that was um, I was listening to a lecture one time mm -hmm. and they said if you don't pray and you're still getting everything that you want in this life that means Allah has given you the dunya only the akira is, is not for you that's scary you're thinking hold on wait hmm? this life is a beautiful illusion I don't want this the fact that people are prioritizing their dunya and forgetting their akira the dunya is only for like let's say if you even live to 60 years 60 years the akira is forever forever never ending and you want to jeopardize that it's not worth it it's not worth it for just the temporary satisfaction for like that instant gratification that we chase for especially as the youth